Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Nate Watches the Next installment in the Blackwell Ghost series. I've been really enjoying this series of films and as I've discussed in the previous videos, I really love the found footage genre and I really can feel the passion involved in making this project. It's just been a lot of fun to watch it from start to when I get to finish and we're on the fourth film of I believe seven right now. So when you're falling into this territory, you're wondering what's going to happen to keep it fresh and exciting and new or if it's just going to fall off and be either more of the same or get progressively worse. And I am pleased to say I really enjoyed this installment in the series, and I'll get into it more when we get into the review. The Blackwell Ghost 4 is directed by Turner Clay. Turner returns to the Lightfoot house to continue his investigation. This time he researched into the first victim, Susan. He finds out from the detective there, there was a note left with when Lightfoot committed suicide. It ended up being a map to the first victim, Susan's body. The map is encrypted and Turner has to find a way to decode it while crazy things continue to happen at the Lightfoot house. So this takes place in the exact same place that the third film took place in where Turner went to the house in Florida that the serial killer was living at and at the beginning of the film were uh, introduced to a little bit more of a personal connection with Turner's character that his wife is pregnant and she's getting close to having the baby He's spending a lot of their money on this documentary, so there's some tension between the husband and wife there. He ends up going to do this investigation by himself, and he goes back to the house, is investigating more into the crime, and crazier things start to happen than in the previous film. I really enjoyed this movie a lot. I think it's right there with the first one as my favorite in the franchise because it takes kind of the core foundation of the third film and obviously it's being shot in the same house but it's amping everything up to a hundred the things that happen in this movie are so much more interesting intense and unsettling than in the third film and that's something i really appreciated about this movie is that turner in the last film when he was going to the house was unsettled, he was uncomfortable, there was like one of the nights he ended up sleeping in his car. You can tell that he is incredibly on edge in this film, like to the point where he's like checking his blood pressure while he's in the house. He ends up running out multiple times just because of how unsettling it is because not only are you in this house in the middle of nowhere by yourself, but like there's no other houses around that are populated with people and you know the history of the house, you know the violent, horrific things that have occurred occurred in and around that area and that because it's been built up so well through these past two films really just kind of makes the experience that much more uncomfortable. They did a really great job of including really horrifying imagery in this. The, the I don't want to call them jump scares because it's not the same thing, but the tension and the scares that do happen in this are executed really well. There's still a level of nuance to it that it doesn't just feel like a lazy something is included to kind of scare you uh, in a cheap way. It's really well done because it accompanies that atmosphere so well and there is still a lot of like the clanging in the background but that makes sense you have to have some sort of introduction and lead up into a scare like that and I really appreciated that a lot there's still some moments early on in the film that you can feel that it's trying to find its footing and I think that's probably the issue with just this whole series is just kind of getting you to that spot but one of the things I appreciate with Turner in this film is kind of Adding to that relationship with him and his wife, I think that that adds an entire other layer and dynamic to the film that works really well because rather than it just be a guy goofing off and like trying to do paranormal investigation, there's stakes now. There's a risk like he's leaving his pregnant wife at home to go do this and there's a phone call between the two of them towards the third act of the film that I think really kind of cements just like what he's giving up in order to do this and is it really worth it giving up like... The birth, like being around for the birth of your child and those types of things to document uh, these things for this film. And I thought that was a really cool inclusion in the movie that didn't necessarily have to be there, but it added another layer that made me appreciate it even more. And I respect Turner for doing that. And like I said, there's some really great moments in this that are really creepy. It does a really nice tie-in with some of the information that's given to you at the beginning of the film, at the very end that I really like kind of building into the fifth film. And 
what that could possibly lead us into. And I just really enjoy this setting. I really liked when they were at the Blackwell house in the first film, but there's only so much you can do with that. Tying this haunt into like a really horrific tragedy, like a serial killer murdering these people, really kind of elevates it to 10 and makes it something really engaging and immersive. And I really look forward to watching the fifth installment in the series. So if you've seen the Blackwell Ghost 4, did you love it? Did you hate it? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought. I thought this was great. This is definitely up there with the first one as my favorite in the series. And I'm really looking forward to see how this story sort of wraps up. As always, if you can like the video and subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a lot and lets me know the type of content you're looking for. I'm always putting out new material and look forward to getting more out for you in the near future. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.